This me. November 6, 2017. Around 150 migrants leave Tripoli aboard a flimsy raft, desperate to reach Europe and start new lives. Many of them will drown, the result of decisions made by politicians far away in European capitals. Most are fleeing violence and economic desperation in sub-Saharan Africa. And once in Libya, they face new dangers, like torture and human trafficking. But to escape to Europe and to safety, they must first cross the Mediterranean Sea. Smugglers force them onto dangerously overcrowded and fragile rafts. In the night, everywhere is dark. I was highly scared. Well, I have no choice but to move into dinghy. I saw many people, rebels, shooting guns indiscriminately. Over the next eight hours, the sea becomes rougher and the raft starts taking on water. Many passengers fall into the sea, some without life jackets. People were screaming, people were shouting, people were crying. Oh my, oh my, oh, I thought that I'm already dead. The migrants' best hope for rescue is their satellite phone. They call the Italian Coast Guard for help. The Italians then alert all ships in the area to the raft's approximate location. They also contact their go-to partner, the Libyan Coast Guard. By the time anyone arrives, the migrant raft is just outside of Libya's waters. In 2016, the European Union and Italy made an abrupt decision to outsource rescue operations here to a new partner, the Libyan Coast Guard. It's a policy with deadly consequences. Together with the research groups Forensic Oceanography and Forensic Architecture, we reconstructed the events of November 6 to show you how this one decision cost at least 20 lives on a single day. Two hours after being contacted by the Europeans, the Libyan Coast Guard vessel arrives first on scene. The Libyan boat was coming on a high speed. The wave was so high, so people gushed into the water. Half of the people in the boat fell in the water. We have blurred the migrants' faces to protect them from retaliation. Because I don't know how to swim, I don't swim. Wave just take me along, take me far. Most people were around me, we were scattered. Some people couldn't float, so most of them are gone. Watch how close the Libyan vessel gets to the raft, ignoring standard rescue tactics. Some migrants are pulled under. People were buried. The wave sank me in the water and took me far away to what I saw everything. I saw him, he's videoing the people drowning. We obtained footage from this Libyan's phone. We are shouting, help, help, help. They did not respond us. They were shouting at people, making dangerous comments. So I was like, what is going on? And then I just saw a ship painted in blue, the road to Sea Watch. They were coming gently, they were coming gently. This is Sea Watch, a German humanitarian rescue operation. They've also been contacted by the Italians and arrive a few minutes after the Libyans. Sea Watch positions themselves at a safe distance. Sea Watch is also recording with nine video cameras and photos because the Libyan Coast Guard has a history of violence towards volunteer rescue groups. They quickly dispatched their small speedboats to reach victims. So everything started quite early in the morning. We got the first message about the distress situation. They also warned us about the presence of the Libyan Coast Guard. They told me that I should tell the crew to be careful and that we should take all measures against aggressions from the Libyan Coast Guard. Of course, the first things coming to my mind are like, okay, what are their intentions? Are they letting us rescue the people or are they going to threat us? Are they even going to attack us with weapons? Is my crew safe in this moment? We're on scene command, stay away. Sea Watch immediately starts making split second decisions about who to rescue first. No, try to assist on the other side of the Libyan Coast Guard. There's a lot of people in the water directly at the Libyan Coast Guard ship. Migrants are scattered in every direction. It's impossible to reach everyone at once. I'm paramedic. I'm in the blue one. 
in such a chaotic rescue situation, there are a lot of different things in the water. And then you see, okay, it's a body, so we have to go there directly, we have to be there now. These people normally can't swim. Drowning is like a thing of 30 seconds, or maybe a minute. This is me, you know, I was alone, far away. When the sea watch locates me, I'm lucky. I didn't think that I'm going to make it. I thought I'm going to die. There were so much people in the waters. We tried to rescue all of them, but there were very big distance between them. At this moment, the frame shows at least nine people in immediate need of assistance. Many more are out of view. This person here, this person is amazing. Yeah. Amidst the chaos, Sea Watch notices a desperate hand that is nearly within reach. One of the rescued migrants jumps in to save him. But it's too late. Meanwhile, the Libyans continue to hinder rather than help the rescue operation. And if you're wondering why the Libyans even show up at all, it's mainly to fulfill a deal with the EU that keeps funding and resources coming their way. Saving lives doesn't seem to be at the top of their list. There were like 12 soldiers who were just standing there and were screaming. We tried to communicate with them that they should just be silent. When they're silent, we can at least hear what other people are screaming. As the rescue continues, the Libyans turn increasingly confrontational. It's part of a long-standing pattern of threatening humanitarian workers. We have been monitoring you for the last two days. Do not come back close to our waters. Next time you will be targeted. This is Europe's preferred partner in action. The Libyans have even boarded other NGO ships by force and fired on them. These past incidents are on the minds of Sea Watch as they approach the Libyans on November 6th. If you put that all together, the threat level in the minds of our crew is very high. The driver of the speedboat said that they are facing big aggressions from the Libyans. They said they're threatening to shoot us. They made signs like this and like holding like weapons like this. Suddenly, the Libyans begin hurling hard objects and potatoes at the Sea Watch crew. It's not only a potato, it's like a very physical attack on, on, on one of our um, crew members, and that makes me very angry. The threats escalate. Sea Watch is forced to retreat for their own safety. Without Sea Watch filling in the gaps, the incompetence of the Libyans' rescue efforts is on full display. Why they are saving people? Why they were saving people? They can't do anything because they have no capability of taking people who are already in the water to their ship. This man begins to sink. His life could be saved if the Libyans deployed the raft mounted on their vessel. But they claim it's broken. They throw life jackets, but it's not enough. He drowns. They have a boat like what the Sea Watch people use. It was there like for decoration. The Libyan Coast Guard, it's, there's, it's not a rescue boat, it's just a warship. They don't have the speed boats, they don't have a medical treatment area, they don't have doctors, there's no chains for good rescue. Botched rescues like this were almost unimaginable just a few years ago, when European countries were still leading rescue efforts. Between 2013 and 2014, Italy alone saved more than 100,000 lives. But then, everything changed. Nationalism and anti-immigrant fervor spiked. So Europe decided to stop the flow of migrants at any cost, without getting its hands dirty. It's a cynical solution, outsourcing the responsibility to the Coast Guard of what is essentially a failed state. The EU provides the Libyans with millions in equipment and training. Italy even helped repair the very ship used in this rescue and paraded it in front of the media to make it seem like they solved the crisis. But they haven't. 
Eight of the 13 Libyans manning the November 6 rescue received EU training, including on human rights. Yet they blatantly abused the migrants on board their vessel. They started beating me. That is what I get it, this injury. It's why I have a wound here. They use belt, belt to beat me. Flog, they use flog us, flog us with rope. Beat us, kick everybody, kick, kick, slap everybody. Beat me and I'll jump into the sea again. Many migrants frantically jump back into the water, even though some can't swim. I'm trying to see when I, when I jump inside the water, because I swim to meet the small boat. You will not be afraid that you will die in the water? But I prefer to die in that water for me to, to, to go back to Libya. Because if I go back to Libya, they can, they can kill me. After being beaten, this man jumps from the ship. He clings to the ladder. The Libyan ship still takes off, ignoring all pleas to stop. An Italian Navy helicopter realizes their partners have gone too far and intervene. Only then do the Libyans pull him back on board. The fate of those who survive hinges on which boat they end up on. Those rescued by Sea Watch will be taken to safety. While those on the Libyan boat are taken to detention centers where migrants are often beaten, raped, held for ransom, or sold for slave labor. When we are in the boat, these guys were with me. This guy was captured by Libyan Coast Guard. We tracked down two of the migrants who were brought back to Libya, and we interviewed them by phone. So they took us back to the deporting camp. So they locked us in a room. Hunger, beating, so many type of things that I've not seen in my eyes before. They will tie you down. They will use electric wire, electric wire to choke you. Did they sell you or trade you to other groups? Yes, 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 we were sold to another group. These two Nigerians, a student and a waiter, later escaped the detention camp. They spoke to us from a secret location where they were hiding. And are you safe now? No. And you can't go outside. No food, no freedom, nothing, nothing. We are planning to leave the country. Even though it's dangerous, it's more dangerous to stay. One of the migrants eventually escaped and reached Europe. The other remains trapped in Libya. The Libyan Coast Guard is not rescuing these people, they're endangering these people in the moment and that they're killing people. It's an act of murder in the end. In Europe we know we can't kill people at our border, but if Libyans do that, it's Libya. And it's Africa and then, yeah, Africa is a sad story and then we can live with that. But still, it's European money who's leading to people drowning uh, in the Mediterranean Sea. Every European citizen should be very upset, actually, with this kind of approach. Europe likes to think it is a beacon of tolerance and human rights, but its actions tell a different story. It's not my wish to go on robot drinking. It's not my wish. I just want where I want safety. Safety is what I'm looking for. We are suffering in Libya. We are suffering here. I'm pleading to the European Union to do more, to please, to do more, to assist, to assist and to, you know, to save people's lives.